Okay. Welcome back, everyone, outside the cinema with our weekly episode, your source for cult movie discussions. Your host, Bill and Chris, we are here, despite our yeah. better judgment. <laughs> uh, yeah, welcome back to the show, everyone. What's going on, Chris? I didn't obviously talk to you all weekend, so... How was your, how no, was your you were busy. Day you were very busy, so my weekend was uh, fine. <laughs> was, uh, you know, exciting stuff. Not nah, now, nah, no, nah, which is good. Well, that's good. Yeah, all... I was in I was in Las Vegas all weekend. I flew out there on Friday. I was supposed to do. Uh, I was supposed to film and record a podcast for the guys that do. We watch wrestling, and then my schedule got all screwed up, and then their mm. schedule got screwed up because the guy that was running the venue. Uh, didn't plan for them to be there in any way shape or form so huh. like they didn't have a space set up for them and like they're a pretty popular podcast if you like wrestling uh, i highly recommend listen- listening to we watch wrestling it's like listening to a wrestling discussion show with like just like two of your buddies mm. so but like so then they they ended up having to cancel the show so then i didn't huh. feel as bad because i screwed up my schedule <laughs> and didn't happen uh. anyway so I just enjoyed a weekend of AEW wrestling. I went to I went to um, Rampage on Friday night at Mandalay Bay, and then they did a fan fest mm. on Saturday at, at at Mandalay Bay, where I took some pictures with some some semi famous wrestlers. And then they yep. had their big pay per view on Sunday night, which uh, I, I watched and I enjoyed immensely. And then I flew home on Monday morning, and immediately into the cloud of uh, pollen and other allergens that make my head hurt a lot. Mm. Yeah. It's exciting stuff, but not as exciting stuff. <laughs> Show this week, <laughs> two full moon features. One that the trailer uh, clips from the trailer was featured in Survival of the Film Freaks. Uh, Doll Man from 1991. Yeah, I'd never seen it, and it was one that after watching the trailer, making the doc, I was like, at some point, I want to visit this because the trailer's the trailer's hilarious. Uh, the film, on the other hand, is another story. But, so um, these aren't Patreon picks. I can blame you No, the, if you I don't like me. them? You okay. can blame me. I didn't get a chance okay. to dig through the emails for the Patreon one. <laughs> and plus, since I wasn't going to be here this weekend, it just it, it, it was just easier to, to take two from the list of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the I just, I just want to know whether to blame the listener or you. That's no, all. No, you can blame me. You can blame me. <laughs> uh, the other one is another Full Moon feature from 1992 called Bad Channels. Mm. It's a sci-fi alien, very small alien invasion uh, <laughs> flick. Um, I was watching when I when I put it on, uh, and I, the credit comes up that's based on an idea from Charles Band, and I'm like, <laughs> all right, that's just him make, getting making sure he gets his paycheck. Not even story by yeah. ro- by Charles Band or written by or screenplay right. or nope, not based on a story by based on nope. an idea from Charles Band. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a word I would use, just maybe not in the context that you think. Uh, oh, so no, cool. it is definitely because did you hear all the excitement behind it? I said, <laughs> fantastic. It would have been only more more telling if you were, did one of these. Oh, fucking fantastic. The show has just started, all right? I can't give it all up in, at once. <laughs> that's fair. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're doing with this week. Both of those are available to watch on Tubi uh, and other places. I feel like a lot of the film moon stuff's in a number of places. I'm not, but we mm. watched it on Tubi. So, um, yeah, not a whole lot of other stuff going on. Uh, yeah, I mean, things have been quiet for us recently, which is good, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, I guess. So, um, if you wanted to join the Patreon, though, uh, patreon.com slash outside the cinema. Uh, you get to choose the movies, some movies to be reviewed on the show. Uh, we've got some li- we're getting some lined up for the next couple weeks. You get to get the shows early. Normally, we're recording later this week. Normally, the shows are recorded on Monday, and we release it directly to the Patreon on Monday. You have to wait to Thursday. Otherwise, uh, I'm working on scheduling some bonus content and some bonus stuff uh, to also get onto that feed because we haven't done any in a while. My just schedule has just been insane between editing the new documentary. Uh, and then I have a music video gig that I just picked up and then another short film. And then we're releasing mm-hmm. The Woodsman uh, is premiering in June. So, like, it's just the schedule has been crazy. So the bonus content, I'm sorry, I do apologize. It has not been there. But once we can get some done, we'll get some music shows. We'll get to maybe some list shows or something. We'll, fig- we'll figure it out. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's a $5 monthly donation, $10 if you want to join the ultimate tier where basically you can dictate anything you want to happen on the show. If you want to 
co-host if you want to um if you want to co-host you also just understand that you have to you may have to work within our schedule we can't Chris's work schedule is very different than my work schedule, so we are fairly limited in the time. But if you want to come on the show with us, you're absolutely welcome. Uh, program the show, you know, yep. give us segments, whatever you want to do if you're in that $10 tier. Uh, and I think a lot of you guys that are in that $10 tier don't take advantage of that. Which is cool, because I mean, guess that makes my life a lot easier. <laughs> but know that it's there. If it's if you will, you want to get involved and you want to, and you want to you know, dictate some stuff, by all means. Uh, patreon.com slash outside the cinema plus you get access to the show archive that's where all the old stuff is you can get all all of that so uh chris anything um that you want to share before we um we get into the main show did you watch the the obi-wan series yet or new or new stranger things or anything um we watched uh first two obi-wan episodes um and the droid that i thought was forlom is just a droid that looks like forlom so that's fine that's okay. fine considering what happens similar uh, bottle number i'm assuming i don't know its name but it looks a lot uh very 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 similar but that makes sense that there's more than one we had ig 11 not 88 so whatever that's fine um i'm liking it i am of course one of the people that is like all right uh star wars is like pizza it's it, there's good pizza and bad pizza but you're still eating pizza nice yeah. right so all right I did not like the show that should have been written directly for me, but I will watch the Book of Boba Fett. Skip over the mods because I just didn't like that part. I didn't, nope, nope. I didn't watch any nope. of the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, Robert Rodriguez's um, eye for special effects I don't think fits Star Wars as well as um, other people's, okay. let's just say. Okay. Um, but it was fine. It was fine. I was more distracted by Tamora Morrison's veneers than anything else because it, it did affect the way he speaks. Okay. Like if you watch Elvira talk now as opposed mm. to in the just just 10, 20 years ago, I think she's had veneers done because it definitely kind of affects the way people talk. Okay. All right. I wouldn't even have thought of that. So it was that was distracting for me to watch in Book of Boba Fett. But uh, I mean... Jesus Christ! It's it's you paying for Disney? What f less than ten ten bucks a month? Right? I forget what Disney is. You um, sign up and forget. I might have it. I don't know. I have free that through play. my phone. Yeah. Yeah. I got I got the triple play. That's the three of them. Hey, what's yeah. Andor? Cassie and Andor was um the the dude in Rogue One, um, played by Oscar. I no, that's Poe again. I forget his name. He's the one with the robot with K2SO. Uh, but okay. K2SO isn't with him in the first season. He will be, I guess, in the second. Okay. So I another, I was not interested series? in that at all. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I, I was not interested in that at all. Then I saw the trailer and I'm like, yeah, okay. That looks good. I'll wa you know what? So I'll watch whatever. Whether it's good or bad. Now we got about forty five minutes into the first episode of Stranger Things and then we realized, oh, you have school tomorrow. So <laughs> um I haven't, Strange yeah, I haven't watched much recently, so Stranger Things just kind of feels like to to us. It's like okay, well, we got to finish it. Yeah, I'm gonna watch. The, yeah, I'm gonna watch that too. The only things I've watched since we did the show last week was I watched two documentaries. Uh, one on HBO Max called Fake Famous, which was about mm. uh, them. Did you watch this by any chance? No, I haven't heard of it. It's basically a documentary where they take they handpick these people that have small Instagram. Um, followers and audiences and attempt to turn them into influencers okay and uh it's pretty interesting the way it works out because they have three different people they have like one young girl that's an actress uh um a gay male who is like trying to work into the into the world of the of the gay subculture and you know become okay. an icon uh and then one uh african-american dude who's just kind of like i don't fucking care about anything <laughs> so it's pretty interesting and in the way that the, it works the three of them and they get three different results with them uh based on the reactions of the people themselves not necessarily so much what uh the public perceives it's actually okay. it's pretty it's pretty it's worth watching definitely worth watching uh hmm. and then i also watched um a new documentary that was on netflix which is i believe a, i believe it's a korean documentary because the version that I watched was dubbed and subtitled called um, Cyber Hell Exposing an Internet Horror oh. about these um, guys uh, that basically use like Reddit, Reddit threads and chat rooms and these like illegal sites where they dupe 
<laughs> girls into basically having to like take all kinds of like compromising pitch- pitchers and Ugh. like all this stuff where they just basically torture these people um, via the internet. It was uh, frightening. It was frightening. So, whose point of view is that told from? Um, the victims. Okay, so there's no the there's no interaction with the abusers then. Um, no, they, I mean they're 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 featured in it in terms of like when we find out who they are and okay. like what happens to them, and it's more really about the um the media side of it in terms of like a you know a um TV station uh featuring the story, and then basically okay. these guys go after the people that were the reporters from the TV station, the reporters from the newspaper and stuff, and try to like. Be like, don't cover this because you know some bad stuff's gonna happen to you, and so then it's like they, they with the police and how the police ended up tracking down. It was actually quite, mm. it was quite good if you can handle wa- reading subtitles or watching um, a dub documentary, which I sometimes have a hard time watching um, a subtitled or dub documentary. Uh, I don't really have an issue with watching subtitles or anything in in feature films, but documentaries sometimes I I have a harder time with it. There's a lot of information sometimes that they yeah, gotta throw yeah, at you. Yeah, you're getting a lot of stuff thrown at you in a quick manner, uh, mm. and sometimes it's just tough to keep up with it. But it's quite good. It's um, it's it's technically a Netflix a Netflix film, but I'm pretty sure that it was made in Korea and then they they, they imported it over here. Mm. But it's worth it's worth checking out. So, good. so yeah. But our films that were featured this week, obviously, uh, Full Moon features. Um, I didn't intend on actually picking two Full Moon flicks. It just kind of happened that way. Um. Which one do you want to do first? We should do them in order. Okay, Dollman. Did Did you watch the 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 other one all the way to the end? Yeah, I did. Yeah, let's let's we get fucking do it in universe order. <laughs> the the the, uh, the the full moon universe is is in full display here. Uh, yeah. Let me get the trailer for Dollman. It's Man. more integrated than Warner Brothers DC stuff. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Um, considering they actually at least like paid attention to it, yeah. Because uh, I forgot that Dollman was also in a couple of other movies, wasn't he? he was in Do- he was in Dollman versus um, Demonic Toys too. He, he fought the Demonic Toys. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, here is a trailer. Oh man, my thing is not hooked up. Hold on. <laughs> Turned off the um, turned off the my my iPad while I was gone, uh, and then now it's not hooked up anymore because you know things, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, we should be good to go now. And now that I said that, it's not gonna work. Uh, On the planet Arcturus. He's the toughest cop around. That's a Kroger Blast! Most powerful hat in the universe! That's right, fat boy. What do you want, asshole? Nothing. You're just gonna walk away? On the planet Earth, he's 13. Is tall. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, fuck! That's about the size of it. Shit! Can we keep it? Hold oh, me together. I'm going to war. With who? It's the fucking doll man. Who else? Teenagers with an attitude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that ends pretty abruptly. Uh, Doll Man, <sighs> 1991. Uh, hey, so we're going to trick you into watching this movie with Robocop's theme. Tim Thomerson is Rick <sighs> Bardo. Jackie Earl Haley is also there. Uh, H- Humberto Ortiz, Nick Guest, Judd Omen. Bunch of actors that if you if you've ever watched um, a full moon feature, you're like, oh, okay, I, these guys, I know these guys. <laughs> that would have been awesome if you stopped that bunch of actors. Bunch of actors. That's it. Bunch just of, 
bunch of people featured yep. in the film. Uh, the story for Doll Man is fairly simple. Tim Thomerson is this uh, policeman from a planet called Artorus. Um, he's the no nonsense, don't give a fuck police guy because his family was killed by like drug dealers or whatever. <laughs> um, it's funny because Artorus essentially is Earth. It's just in an, it's just another planet somewhere else in the there because they have all of the same issues we have apparently. Yeah, um, it's just it's just run through a different filter. Yeah, yeah, and there's a gun that goes <laughs> pew instead. That's the, that's the difference. Um, uh, yeah. So you know he's the hard nosed cop that gets results no matter what. And he's, we got to get rid of him, and so they they suspend him. Uh, but then, uh, I don't know, a floating head of some sort kidnaps him. Yep, yep. Hey, I think that's the brother so of um, that's the brother of uh, Overdog from um, was it Metal Storm? Maybe no, oh, whatever. Maybe. Could be, <laughs> it could be. Um. Oh man, this movie's so stupid. <laughs> it really is. It really is. So this stupid. is this is the thing that I was I was okay with it until the ground shook and the camera just went like this. Yep. yep. That was it. It just shook a little bit, like straight up and down. And I'm like, really? That was like a that's a post effect. It's like, come on, like what the fuck like yeah. I, i'm i'm fine with with this guy pune right he directed yeah, Al, it yeah albert pune directed it who directed cyborg sword and the sorcerer uh yeah radioactive dreams that we covered on the show yep yep i i am all for watching people progress as filmmakers and stuff but it doesn't seem like he ever <sighs> learned well, anything you know, new it's I guess. interesting for him because he started like higher, like higher up. Like <laughs> he did Cyborg, which was like one of, if not John Claude Van Damme's like early, like really big hits that brought him to the mainstream. True. And then he did Kickboxer Two, and then a few other films, and then he started doing like Doll Man and Nemesis and Arcade. Yeah, and, like, but if you look at the technique used in cyborg it is it's a very two-dimensional flat there's there's no flair to it or anything there's nothing that makes it there's no imagination no there's none whatsoever in, it's in the way it's filmed. world such yeah. a small world for what they're you know what what the what they're trying to do um so essentially he's a you know this this like hotshot cop that that doesn't play by the rules. Um, he's got this gun that like basically is like a laser blaster type revolver <laughs> that like blows dudes' arms off and shit. So like his nemesis is this floating head. Skaresh was it was his name right? Sure. I didn't care to remember honestly. Was it Skaresh or was that one of the other guys? I'll look Sprug? it up while you talk. <laughs> Sprug. <laughs> I don't know. Hector? <laughs> Jackson? It could have been Stolfer? Hector for all I know. Huh? I think it was Skoresh. But so, like, he was a bad dude that Tomerson's character, like, blew off his entire body, and they still managed to, like, save him. Just yeah. his head yep. is attached to, like, what is akin to, like, an FPV drone. <laughs> yeah. And, like, no, he's breathing, and he's speaking, and and, like, all of these things, but, like, he doesn't have a body. It's just a head. Yeah. So I don't know how he's breathing. Or right. like there's no blood. <laughs> or uh, any of these any of these any of these questions that I have, they're not going to be answered. But like mm. he's on top of this drone just floating around and the effects are so like <laughs> It's like they're kind of funny because it's so bad. So when they shoot him speaking, they shoot him from just the like drone piece up. Um, yeah, because obviously he's standing and they've got, they've got like the drone thing built around his neck. But then when they show pictures of uh, or shots of him from further away, they have like a man, a wax mannequin head placed on top of it <laughs> with its yeah. eyes closed and like its mouth closed and just like <laughs> on top of it. But yet we hear him talking and see him talking 
But just whenever there's a shot that's not his face mm-hmm. from further back, it's this just mannequin head dropped on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's Sprug. It was Sprug. Sprug. Okay. okay. By Frank Colson. Why do I know that name? Oh, he's in Silicon Valley. Oh. And well, here's the interesting thing years. about it. At least this had an interesting looking bad guy. I'll give you that. Yeah, Jackie Earl Haley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He played a part in. Oh, okay. He was in Always Sunny, but the new season, I see. I'm going to have to go back and see if I can see his face. Because he Fair. definitely looks different. Anyway, um, so um, FPV drone guy is like, yeah, you thought you killed me, uh, Tim Thomerson, but <laughs> you didn't. They put right. me back together. And Tim Thomerson's like, you don't really look like you're put back together. Yeah, he tries to have one-liners and comebacks, but they are his delivery is so fucking bored. Yeah, do we love Tim Thomerson or do we hate Tim Thomerson? I feel the way about Tim Thomerson, the way he felt about acting in this movie. Yeah, because I mean, obviously he's uh, he's the star of the the Trancers series, which um, Joe has been uh, so graciously making his way through. <laughs> um, but like, he's really probably best known. I mean, I guess he's best known for Trancers, and he was in Near Dark. Um, but like, mm. I feel he, he's one of those character actors that every time I see him in something, I'm just kind of like, yeah, you're not nearly as enjoyable as I think you are. Yeah, I I think it definitely varies on his interest in um the film the project. Yeah. yeah. So, um so he's got like a magnet in his hand that allows his gun to come flying back to him. So the bad guy like tried to take his gun cuz he's got he's the bad guy, he's got minions there and then he gets the gun back and he shoots one of the bad guys and then he shoots yep. the other bad guy. Um and then I don't know the floating head flies away and gets into a spaceship. <laughs> and then Tim Thomerson somehow gets into a spaceship. Uh, and then he's chasing the bad guy who also has some sort of like thermo nuclear detonator or something. Um, and they're flying and they fly through a portal, I guess. Yeah, sure. Is that what it was? What they did was they made it so that it seemed like a once in a billion chance this kind of thing would work. And I, for ripping open portals into other dimensions and stuff, I'm okay for that. Make it as difficult as possible because obviously we're watching the movie because you did this, but it can't be something that everybody can do. So that's fine, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, no. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, they go through this, like, portal, which brings them to Earth. Uh, and now they're tiny. But they're not tiny. They're the same size. Mm. They just are, everything on Earth is just six times bigger yeah. on the average, is what the computer says. So yeah. like, that's the whole crux of the thing is that like he's this little guy, but he's still got all the same badass tendencies. And Doll Man is gonna fuck we fuck you up regardless. Yeah. There you go. It's and a, then it's, it's then it's just um a serious episode of Sledgehammer um with a <laughs> with a cop with no with no a cop with no sense of humor. Yeah. A uh, black hole of um charisma. Yeah. Everybody in this movie. Oh, everybody. Except, you know yeah. what? You know what? Jack Earl Haley gives it his best, man. I'll give that guy his Yeah. Best. He knew. He 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 knew. I'm better than this, but I got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so he plays Braxton, who's the head of the one of the one of the the gangs that you know are moving drugs or whatever, because mm. um, you know it's the eighties. That's all everything is. So they yeah. crash land in New York in the Bronx somewhere. Uh, it looks like, and like basically, this entire movie is just filmed in like the rubble of a building that was knocked down. Uh, it was <laughs> yeah, like, but in California, right? So, right in California, <laughs> that's supposed to be the Bronx. Yeah, uh, they level the building at p- some point somewhere with like a wrecking ball, and like some of the build- little pieces of the building are still still up, or like so you know, like Charles Band was like, "Hey, here's 150 bucks. Can we use this for like some, right, three or right. four days? Give me yeah, give me three days." Because <laughs> virtually everything takes place in this like broken down building area. Yeah, uh, he meets Debbie, who's um, a single mom, or was she the older sister? <laughs> was that was that little kid her son? 
Shit, I didn't even pay enough attention to that to remember it. I didn't commit well, that to memory. Did I. Doesn't I'll matter. Say, There's a kid. I don't know. There's a kid. Um, <laughs> and basically, he, when Dollman and an FPV crash in uh, this this knockdown building, these drug dealers are coming after Debbie because there's a scene earlier when Debbie tries to chase the drug dealers out of the, gives them the um. Oh, I don't want you selling drugs in my neighborhood. And I'm like, your neighborhood is just a broken down like lot <laughs> with some 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 yeah. bricks and stuff in it. Like this yeah. there's no neighborhood here. What are you talking about? Right. And the guy like, looked at no her anyway sell. and said, But Debbie, I sell drugs to the neighborhood. <laughs> I sell drugs to the community. <laughs> um I haven't watched that in a while. I gotta I gotta Remember they were going to make that Western? They were going to make a Black Diamond? Yeah, what Western. happened with that? It just never happened. They filmed a lot. They filmed a, a sizzle reel, I know. I mean, but I don't... Yeah. Think, that would have taken know. a lot of money to do, because that's a lot of different sets no, and not, stuff. Not necessarily. Not if, if the... Um, not if you know the right people. I guess time, then. Right? It'd take time. Yeah. It's probably... Yeah. And Michael Jai yeah. White's career kind of like got real busy around that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying that Michael Jai White's career doesn't matter because it absolutely does, but not in the context <laughs> of what we're talking about. Uh, so, um, Dollman sees the these guys harassing Debbie, and he gets out of his spaceship. Uh, and we get the first taste of the special effects used to make him look little compared to everybody else. Mm. As expected, it looks poorly. Oh, yeah. Um, they do a couple of forced perspective shots that just don't work. Um, but mostly just the camera looking down on him is what they do use. <laughs> and I think that's what frustrated me the most is they're like, he's only supposed to be like a foot tall. Mm. And I was like, well, you're doing a really poor job of showing that to me because you're not even <laughs> like you didn't even make sets that had like giant boulders or yeah, like, that's true. Anything like I that not even an extra large fork. <laughs> like, <laughs> Fork. <laughs> or like a spoon. I mean, what year like was this out? What, what, <clears throat> what year is this from? This is 91. So had Honey, I Shrunk the Kids already been released? I think so. I feel like that was like 88, maybe. 89. So they could have definitely called up and said, hey, can I get one of them Cheerios you had or something? <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back, I promise. Yeah, maybe that maybe that ant. Can I have the, the head of that ant that you guys were yeah, using? No, none of those gags of like the only time is there's a part where towards the end he's crawling through what's supposed to be like a pipe and a and a rat comes into the pipe. Uh. And then he has like a conversation with the rat of like, Hey, you don't want to come in here and the rat's like, mm? And then he's like, Hey, I got this gun and then the rat's like, Oh, I don't want any trouble. Yeah, I mean, the only other time we've seen that work is, uh, hey, donkey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're a donkey. So, I produce Entourage. <laughs> so eventually the flying FPV head is able to hook up with Jack Earl Haley's character. And he's like, hey, listen, I want to get back to my time. Um, so I've got this bomb. I'll give you this bomb mm. if you help me take care of this guy, Bardo. And then also help me get back to my get back to my home, and Jack Earl Haley being the criminal that he is in everything <laughs> that he does, is like, uh, yeah, sure, yeah, I'll be out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone seems to take like <clears throat> what happens in this movie just like super matter of factly. Yeah, like, when Dollman saves the girl, like she just like picks up his spaceship and like puts it under her arm and is like, all right, we gotta go. <laughs> yeah, like I don't understand why the bad guys didn't just grab tiny floaty head and just chuck the head and keep the machine and be like we could do something with this well spoiler alert like they end up killing him <laughs> well i mean he has to die obviously yeah but what i thought was funny is he's like the arch enemy of doll man and he just gets squashed by J jackie earl haley <laughs> yeah i mean it's kind of super easy to do That's, that yeah i mean yeah <laughs> And for some reason, Dollman's gun is still very effective against guys that are like five feet taller. Like, yeah, five feet taller than him. Yeah, I. I mean, the way the gun works, it should have liquidated the normal sized people to him, right? And yeah. like been a bullet hole to large people. Yeah, but fuck um, consistency. <laughs> I just got to make another movie to fulfill my contract. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, 
part of me still kind of likes what's going on here. Like, it's bad. Don't get me wrong. Right. I mean, it's full moon, so you know what you're getting into with it. Yeah. Uh, or or issues, shame on you for not knowing. Right. And my biggest issues come from the fact that, like, uh, I don't know what's exactly, like, happening half the time because they're so inconsistent with what his size should be. Yeah. Like, one second it seems like he's, like, the size of an ant, and then the next second he's, like, like the size of, like, a little person. Or something, you know what I mean? Like, so, <laughs> yeah, it's just bizarre. I don't know. It's just bizarre, man. It's just, it's just weird. Yeah, it's lazy, is what it is. It's just laziness. I mean, you didn't see that shit in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, a billion dollars later, they weren't allowed to be lazy. <laughs> but I mean, like. Uh, yes. Do you want to finish your statement, or you want to grade, institute it into your grading? Yeah, I'll, I'll do. I'll do the whole thing here. I just need to call it up again, just to just to make sure. So, Dollman obviously it was released direct to video. So, uh, like you, you know what you you're getting into there, right? I mean, how can you not? So, nope, that's the wrong thing. I want to look up uh, what's his face here. Uh, the original story by Charles Band. And I want to see. This guy produces so many goddamn movies. So true. Um, oh, my God. Finding it on this list would be. <laughs> what year was this again? 90 1991. One. Okay, so. Oh my God! He took a vacation. He only produced one, two, three, four, five movies in '91. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. Huh? He picked the right year. So, but that I mean, oh my God! I did so many. So I'm just sorry. All right, it's all right. If you know who Charles Band is. You know exactly what you get. Oh, and also he produced Metal Storm. Basically the same idea. Sorta. Of. Not really. But there was another one. It wasn't Metal Storm. This is gonna bug this shit out. Tim Thomerson was in Metal Storm. Was he? Are you surprised? He was Rhodes. Oh, I'm not surprised. No, obviously I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not Metal Storm. Ah, it's shit. It's uh Hunter. It's something Hunter. Not Space I'm not Hunter. Sure, I'm not sure where you're going with this. So Yeah, it is Space Hunter. Space. Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. That's the movie I was thinking of with Underdog. Ah. Yeah. We covered that, right? I don't know. I watch it once every three years, and I'm like, yeah, this is terrible, but I'm going to watch the whole goddamn thing. Because um, <laughs> Ernie Hudson is in it. He is. I'm pretty sure we covered that at some point. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Michael Ironside, Molly Ringwald, Peter Strauss. So that's what I was thinking of with like the head on a weird cyborg body kind of thing. So as you can tell, I don't want to talk about this movie because it's it's not good. It's, it's just not good. Uh, the lead is bland. There's nothing there. Like he's going for a hard-boiled detective kind of thing, but hard-boiled detectives you know they're they're smart or they're a sucker or something there's there's something going on they can get played they get you know how noir works um and gumshoe stuff but this was just like he he was just plodding along the whole time until he gets to you know finish the story it was <laughs> no, i'm sorry Continue. as a side as a side note um I started watching The Boys uh, with Nova because Ripley was asleep. And Nova, uh, they're introducing the characters. And um, Black Noir comes on. And Nova looks at me and he goes, are you kidding me? Like what? Black Noir. His name means Black Black. I'm like, you're getting it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt with this movie. <laughs> I felt like turning to somebody and going, are you fucking kidding me? Okay, fine. Uh, this is just a this is just a D plus. It's just filler. It's a filler movie, isn't it? It's just yeah. Let's just yeah, make no, something because really we got money, and um, I bet Tim Thomerson will be in it. Yeah, yeah, he will. <laughs> I don't. I 
I can recommend it only if you're aware of what you're getting into, which is a a D a a, a D level movie, not even a B movie. It's this is I don't yeah, no. I don't I, I can see how this could fall into like a cult movie kind of thing, but I don't think it it has any anything in the story that really would cause you to want to come back. Um yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on almost all of those points. I think <laughs> like it's funny because the idea based on one from Charles Band, uh, mm-hmm. like, could make an enjoyable flick. Like, the problem is, this is a movie about a hard-nosed, as you said, noir-style detective. That's how it felt. Been, I don't know if that's what they intended. No, no, that Well, that's how it came across. <laughs> yeah. Who was, you know, brought to another world. He's only 13 inches tall. Mm-hmm. And this movie's not played for laughs. No. That's the thing. I think that's where this movie's biggest issue comes from. Where, like, if you had had fun with this and it, like, played it up and, like, tongue firmly in cheek, I think mm-hmm. it would have been far more enjoyable. Yeah. Well, it's also on have- IMDb as a action. Hold on. I got to get rid of this thing. Uh, sci-fi comedy. Yeah, so at what comedy. point at what point did he ride into battle on the back of a calico cat? Because right. that would have been funny anything would have been funny so i think that's where this this film's i think biggest failure is is that it was the wrong tone for a silly story yeah but they like played off the like you know oh new york is you know under siege by gangs and jackie earl haley plays like an angry mean like leader of a of a of a gang and like the fact that like he's fighting a 13 inch tall interdimensional cop (laughs) And nobody's making a joke is just is just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's just wrong. Yeah. So I'm not gonna yeah. grade it quite as low as you did. I'm gonna go with a C minus because like you said, if you go into it with the right frame of mind, like you can watch it and kind of yep. get some kicks out of it, but not too many. Here's a joke that you could have put in it. Somebody could have yelled, Mattel Combat and that would have been funny because they're like dolls. Get it? Like Barbies. And it's like Mortal Kombat. That's funnier than anything in that movie. And I know that's a terrible joke. Are you done? Just say yeah and move on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to one year in, into Charles Band's producer uh, credits here. Uh, we're going to go to 1992. Uh, Bad Channels. Here's a trailer for that guy. The entire town of Pahuta. It's tuned to Superstation 66. Please, this stuff's killing me. That was funny. But while dangerous Dan O'Dare is rocking the airwaves, a disc jockey from outer space is about to change the frequency to total terror. He's offering a prize to any beautiful woman who's listening. Hey, whatever they're doing, it's intense. A one-way trip to another (laughs) galaxy. It really sucks! It was one of those things you don't quite see. Aliens are using my voice to aim the machinery. Oh, my God. God! Turn off your radios, people. They're doing it again. Bad channels. In space, no one is safe from rock and roll. Space from safe from what happens? No one in space is safe from rock and roll. Sure. Bad channels, 1992, guys. All right. This one is more in line with what I was thinking the last movie was going to be like. Mm. Uh, 
uh, again, another full moon feature um, directed by Ted Nicolo, uh, written by Charles Band, based on his original idea. Again, I might add. Um, so Ted yeah, very, also was very the- original idea. <laughs> Ted was also very. the uh, is also known for subspecies, TerraVision, Vampire Journals. Uh, and oh, really? TerraVision? Other- you don't yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. TerraVision. Uh, I want to say he also did like a bunch of the Puppet Master movies. Yeah, he, he did Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys, The Horrible uh-huh. Doctor Bones, The Saint Francisville Experiment, Dragon World, <laughs> um, Spellbreaker, Secret of the Leprechauns. What? <laughs> Blood Bloodlust Subspecies Three, Subspecies Two, Bloodstone. That one I've never seen. I think I don't think. Did Savage Island? Oh, he directed the Dungeon Master. Oh, starring Night Court's Richard Mole. Okay, okay. Starring Robert Factor, Martha Quinn, Iron Lustig. Uh... Ask to play a radio station, or ask for your music on a different app. <laughs> My watch does that every now and then. It's like I wasn't fucking talking to you, bitch. So weird. Um, Paul Hip is Dan O'Dare. Uh. This film is it's got a pretty simple story. Um you have uh Shock Rocky radio DJ guy is doing a 24-hour marathon on his new station. Uh and the science, not science, but the like idea behind the fact that he's moved over to this new station after getting himself in trouble mm. uh for having sex on the air. Um and he's taking over this new station that used to be all polka music and it's now going to be rock and roll and he does he, like change himself up and makes him Self keep listening to the same poker record until someone gets the combination to undo the chains. Uh, Martha Quinn works for the for the TV station. She's there to interview him. Uh, this is this is what used to happen, kids. The radio stations were a big thing, and people actually gave a shit about this oh kind god, of stuff. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember when the radio was everything. Yep. Yep. So, uh, so Dan O'Dare's playing some rock and roll, and then some aliens show up. Uh, they use the sound waves to collect beautiful women. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, Martha Quinn sees the UFO. I'm going all over the place on this one. Guys. Doesn't matter. Uh, um, no one believes her. Right. Uh, it's all a big joke for going. like three quarters of the movie. It really is. And even at the end of it, I still feel like some people didn't believe that it actually happened. Yeah. But what is so what is so amazing about this movie is that at what three different points it breaks into music videos. And yeah. three different bands have music videos that are part of the movie where they show up and start playing in these different spots and they use that like to subdue the woman and then magically move her to a tiny bottle. Yeah. Um, but it's like so over the top and only the woman can see the band playing. Mm-hmm. So they keep cutting to like, like the nurse is like in the <laughs> operating room, like gyrating around and like, they're trying to operate on this guy and they're just like looking at her. Yeah. And they cut back to her, like rocking out with the band. Yeah. And my favorite band of all time is in this movie, Psychotic Symphony. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by, yeah, by they, they paved the way for Max Sabbath, so uh, back off. <laughs> they, were bizarre, man. They, were, <laughs> they were bizarre. They uh, were, but you know what? They had a gimmick and they went all in. I got to give them that. They, had, yeah, they knew. Then, They're like, this is our one fucking chance. Too bad it's in this movie. That song. Yeah, hang on. Let me play this part. Yeah, yeah. Turn it off now before it's too late! Hi, kids. It's the Captain Happy Show starring me, Captain Happy. Let me get out my magic mirror. I see Bobby. I see Susie. I see Billy. I have to take a phone call. So you need to talk, Chris. Oh, okay. We're not going to pause. All right. I'll just keep going with this. I don't, uh... (coughs) I don't understand this movie at all. None of this makes sense. This is what we get, though. We get this. this just take a listen. Yeah, 
So I thought, um, oh, Mr. Bungle's in this movie because that definitely sounds like uh, the first Mr. Bungle major release. Uh, but it's not. Don't don't be fooled. It's it's definitely not. Um, I'm gonna tell Bill when he's off the phone that this is definitely uh, the 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 only reason I kept watching this movie is because. Uh, uh, of the the VJ Martha Quinn was in it, and I, I like her. I think she's uh, she's she's fun. I don't know, she's cute. It's fun to watch, and she really does try her best in this. And uh, she's not given much to go with because, I mean, what really ends up happening is that everybody around her is playing everything differently than she is. I think she gets the joke, and um, I don't think anybody else does. All right, I'm back. Sorry. So I was saying that uh, my my favorite part of the whole movie is Martha Quinn, and um, I think she understood the assignment better than some of the other actors because she plays her part of the sky is falling, um, but the other she plays it well, and she knows there's a little bit of tongue in cheek going on there. But it seems like everybody around her just is around her to be a fucking dick. Yeah. No, I agree a hundred percent. Um, it's not good. No, but it's there's no. there's some parts in here that like really um really work. Like the Martha Quinn stuff is good. I actually like the guy a lot that was the DJ too. I thought yes. he did a pretty good job. Um, he was all in. Yes, I like the musical interludes. Um, you did. I did. But like, I mean, they're bad. Don't get me wrong. Like, okay. It's, it's not. I'm not. I'm not like. Oh, I'm really into the songs. Okay. Here. In like, context like, of the movie, you like how they were worked. They in. I got yeah, you. Okay. I actually, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, overall, I actually enjoyed this. Um, enjoyed this a decent, a decent amount. But um, I think where it fails a little bit is that like they have this invading alien with a robot, and they put literally no work into the alien. So. Oh, yeah, he's just, like, string latex and spray foam with a green window to see out of. Yeah, 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 it's bad. It's it's real bad, it's real bad. It is, but he doesn't talk, though, does he? No, 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 he just wears that giant rock, that foam rock on his head the whole time. Yeah, so, um, all right, all right. At least they made a monster, a full monster. the The robot reminded me of, um... See the robot, but I can't remember its name. Is it I that shitty one they made up for Star Tours? <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. Actually, maybe it is. Yeah, yeah. I think it might be. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be actually. All right. Yeah, I could see that. So, uh, but I mean, I mean, you're, if you're comparing this to Doll Man, like this <laughs> first, <much> why? <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. why? Only because really you watched them in a row. About it. Yeah, uh, this this is a this is a far better film and a far more fun film, and it does have that tongue in cheek feel to it. Yeah, yeah, like, because more people got the like, got the assignment. Right, exactly, and it's not played for like slapsticky laughs or anything like that. Um, but it's definitely like it knows what it's doing, and it's not trying to do anything else. Right, you know, like. Everybody, like, when they deliver a line, they're delivering it like their life depends on it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. The guy, like, when they're outside, the so the, the, the we keep talking about the green fungus that, that, like, seals everything off and stuff. So there's a point where they're outside the radio station and they're trying to get in. And there's a guy with a blowtorch and the cop comes over and he goes, hey, how are we doing with getting in there? And he goes, I don't know, sir. It, 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 it replaces itself as fast as I'm burning it off. <laughs> Yeah, he gave it everything he had. Good for him. He did, and he wasn't the only one. Even Martha Quinn too. She was like, "Yeah." She was like, "You know, I saw that UFO, and and I did." <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I've got all these messages coming in because they just canceled our baseball game for some reason. Uh, like trying to like do like ten different things at once. Apologies. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Let's look. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, so we can get to to Joe and and Scott, um, and you can answer your your all your texts. Um, I am going to recommend this, but it also gets a D plus. No, no, you know what? A C minus. It gets a C minus okay. because right. because it's bad, but it's that 
it's the right kind of bad where if you watch it, you're like, yeah, that was awful, but I don't hate anybody because of it. <laughs> Here's a question, though. Here's one question, but and, and this is all I'm going to say about it for the rest of, of time. If there is a, a stinger on the end with Doll Man going to meet the one woman that was left over being tiny, I would assume then that they can use the technology to make Doll Man big and then he can be Giant Man solving crimes. I mean, you would you would think so. Yeah. Yeah. But good for them. At least the connection between Doll Man and this is a logical in-universe connection. So good for you. I guess. Your turn. I mean, I- <laughs> Them trying to build to build a little bit of a world here, um, I appreciate that. Mm. I actually liked this for the most part. Like, it's not it's not the type of film that like we're going to like remember or anything like that down the road. Um, but it's got a couple of fun parts to it. It's got a couple, you know, I like. This is this this is the type of trash I can I can watch. Like I can watch this. Like I'm not gonna search it out or anything, but like if you're looking for something to watch that's kinda like hokey and cheesy, like it's there's a lot worse movies you can watch. A lot worse ones you can watch. It's fun. Martha Quinn is great. The guy that does the uh the that's the DJ is good. Yeah. The, you know, the alien looks silly, but like it's not it's it, it's it's not like you said, you're not gonna hate anybody over it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm sure there's more I could say about this, but I mean, just check it out on Tubi. Or any number of the other full moon places. <laughs> Didn't full moon try to do their own streaming service and then was like, fuck it. It's easier to just put it on everybody else's. I think what ended up happening was I want to say that they. Um, uh, they were they sold it or something, mm. I think, to like like Tubi or somebody. Oh, OK. If I'm not mistaken, okay. I'm log into my fa- my Facebook too, so I can play Joe's message. <laughs> Tell me, incorrect password. <laughs> what the hell is my password? Is your password incorrect password? No, because then that would make sense. <laughs> It'd be awesome if it was. <laughs> It'd be like super smart. <laughs> what? <sighs> I've had more issues with Facebook lately, Joe. I need you to stop sending me the the, the segments on Facebook Messenger every week. Is it just, it's too difficult to get it all working? Well, yeah, because, like, everything is like, oh, you need to two-factor and then do this. Oh. You need to do that. And, oh, it's so stupid. Oh, my God. And the reason, like, I save all my passwords and I do face ID for everything and then it doesn't fucking work. Did you get a new device? I don't even know. Okay. You don't? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now what's going to happen is I'm going to be locked out of it by the time I actually figure out what it is. Yep. So call him up and have him just do it live. <laughs> Forgot password. I tried to set an error at gmail.com. Continue. Send code via email. Hang on, everyone. <laughs> Everything always has to fucking happen all at once. Yes. Should I just sit here quiet the whole time? No, no. <laughs> Have you watched anything interesting lately that we can talk about? Uh, now I'm not even getting the I'm not even getting the email for it. Let me look. Let me see. Because uh, I I had oh you know what um I went back and I'm almost done with season two of the Orville because. Season three is going to uh, at least the first episode will be up tomorrow, and I really like that. I really like that show. <clears throat> um, it manages to tackle subjects in a in a way that is relatable, but also done in a very good storytelling uh, way, like interpersonal relationship type stuff, and how obviously different cultures on Earth are, would would be represented by different races not 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 like um hard and fast but like oh this is what your culture believes so it has to do with this on this show that kind of thing social messages like star trek wanted 
uh, the rumor I heard is that Seth MacFarlane wanted to do a Star Trek series, and they said no. And he pulled a bender and said, "Fine, I'm gonna go make my own Star Trek with hookers and well, blow." Well, I say he actually wrote like wrote a pilot and a pitch for yeah for something. Yeah, and they they were like, if I'm not nah. Mistaken. And uh, up until Brave New Worlds, I honestly believe that uh, his was the best uh, Star Trek out there for a while. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I I like most Star Trek to be fair, but um, some is better than others, isn't it? Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. All right, I think I I was able to hook my phone up to the, okay to to the mixer, so let's try that. Well, hello, Bill. Hello, Chris, and hello, OTC Nation. It's your boy Joe here, and uh, I'm at the end of this dark tunnel because <laughs> Bill made me watch Trancer Six, the final Trancers film. This is it, my friends. The culmination of a franchise whose rabid fan base kept clamoring for more, more, more. Whose commitment to their verse spawned six entries and lasted from 1984 to 2002. A franchise without whom we would never have seen the rise of the incomparable Helen Hunt. A franchise so <laughs> powerful, Tim Thomerson said no thanks to part six even though I'm sure he could have used the payday. <laughs> In fact, this year's TransCon will be bigger than ever. We had to move from Greg's mom's basement to the church basement because the love shack, as Greg calls it, just wasn't big enough to handle Tran. And then my phone, sorry, my phone doesn't, when it goes to sleep. Oh, it's yeah. Gone. Wait, what's that? We're being sued by TransCon, the, the, the trans music convention? <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that again another joke trance music is exponentially more popular than trancers and barely anyone likes trance music anymore well that's i mean that's fair enough <laughs> i'm sure when someone remakes trancers in the next few years it will reignite people's i'm being told from my producer that this has gone on far enough <laughs> well, fair enough uh listen we live in very uncertain times Half of the country has become the Reavers from Firefly, just with New Balance sneakers, a favorite NASCAR driver, and shitty attitudes, instead of the skin and bones of their victims sewn into their flesh, but I'm sure that's not too far away. Shit's pretty bleak, and it's times like these that a lot of us turn to movies, and or podcasts about movies we love, mm. when we need a few hours away from it all. Movies have the power to take us away from shitty reality for a while. We all have our comfort movies. Uh, for some, it's like Jack Hill's oeuvre. I personally love Switchblade Sisters. And for some, it's like Spielberg, uh, like E.T. and Indiana Jones. But, you know, when it comes to Spielberg, fuck you, I'll take Duel any day. Regardless, I would bet my beautiful couple of acres of woods in the central Michigan wilderness that nobody nowhere at any time has ever reached for Trancers 6 for that kind of solace. And I haven't even hit play yet. <laughs> All right, 20 minutes in, and I feel I've won my bet. Think I'm lying? Go ahead. Watch Trancers 6. I double-dog dare you. Yeah. To start, they did one of my all-time favorite bad things. Tim Thomerson obviously wanted nothing to do with Trancers 6, but they had archived footage of him <laughs> from previous films. Of course. So when we fade up after the credits... A hodgepodge of Jack Death sound bites from prior Trancers movies has a full on, barely in context, gee, they tried hard conversation with the head of the council. They're sending Jack back to Los Angeles in 2022 to inhabit the body of his daughter, who he didn't even know he had, uh, to fight Trancers. Well, sort of. I say sort of because the first whole third of this movie is Jack in the body of his daughter doing the things his daughter probably would have done anyway. Eating, getting ready for work, suffering the insufferable co-workers, getting fired for researching something her obviously evil trancer boss doesn't want her looking into, mm -hmm. and getting hit on by the super nerdy co-worker as she's walking out. Dude is like, sucks you got fired, what are you doing tonight? Now, I'm not saying that that's an out-of-the-ordinary thing. I'm, I'm mostly saying if you're that guy, maybe consider drying your hair in the bath. 
Like the tag on the dryer is for pussies, and you're not a pussy, are you? And it's all done in sets that were probably redressed and reused just a few years later for the first evil bong film. Ugh. It's like they rented a small block of storage units and barely dressed them as an office. Oh, here's another fantastic thing happening. Jack goes to his daughter's uh, scientist friend. Mind you, they don't tell us that she's they don't they don't tell us that Jack knows that she's friends with this science paranoid scientist dude. It's like he just knows. He just knows where she's going to go. And this guy is wearing a lab coat even though he works at that big ass space telescope thing just north of LA. But when she walks in, he's got a bunch of beakers and tubes and Tesla coils and shit. Hmm. But like he works in a telescope. <laughs> like I get it. I multitask too sometimes, but this still, like, stands out like a Ford F-150 at a Lamborghini convention. <laughs> Trancer 6 is a massive downgrade from the previous films in every conceivable way, he said, shocking neither show hosts nor anyone listening. The cheapness with which this was made makes those early AIP straight-to-video action films look like Terminator 2 by comparison. <laughs> Here's the whole plot. Trancers are going full-on Charles Manson. Uh, the leaders just kind of randomly send out minions to kill wealthy people in Los Angeles. I mean, a couple times. Using desperate, lonely, drug-addicted people to do their bidding. Yeah, that's, that, that's basically it. That's really all there is to this movie. It's, it's a whole lot of nothing. This movie of, is guilty of something that I occasionally am, and that is trying to wring too much out of something. Mm. If Trancers 6 made any point at all, it's that Trancers 5 was plenty. Here's the thing. The good. <laughs> I guess there were some moments where, that were, like, so bad it's good. Like, one of the one of the watch a movie and make jokes people could have some fun here, I guess. The bad. AIP, on their worst day, was not as poorly acted as Hamily written and is edited by someone with worse ADHD than me. Trancer 6 is going to get a D plus. The Trancer series is going to get a C minus. And, um, ah, Jesus, Bill. Um, <clears throat> what's next? Uh, you're going to start from dusk till dawn. Oh. So should, should start strong and then get real right, bad. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard the man. I'll be back with that next week. Hopefully it doesn't suck. Until then, <gasps> be good, everyone. Hmm. I've been kind of obsessed lately with like series that like have like a really strong like big budget start and then just kind of disappear into like because there's I think yeah three or four from Dust Till Dawn flicks and a series and a series he doesn't need to do the TV series if he doesn't want to I heard the TV series is actually quite good though do you know why why because Tarantino's not playing Seth ah, or whatever there. his name was he's not an actor He's not an actor. He drags me, draws me right out of it every time. Oh, sure. Now I get my code for to log in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why? Why would it be? You know, when you need it. I know, right? <laughs> Keep me logged in. <laughs> Password. Oh, now I gotta create. Uh, let me let me finish this with you guys first. All right. Let me now. I gotta find you. I gotta find Scott's <laughs> thing here now. There's a lot going on, people. He was away. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, like, you go away and you like, like, you never turn your stuff off, but then you're gone for a couple days. You turn it off because you don't want to just let the battery just sit there. Yeah. And then every you come back and everything is like logged out and shit. <laughs> I don't get that, All but right, yeah, I've go. been there. Happy Monday! What a great day because it's the day I get a new show. Uh, we wait, know we've heard this joke. Wait before. a minute, where's the show? So we are pushed to recording next week's show until Wednesday. So Patreon, you will get it on probably Wednesday evening, uh, and then it'll go live out to everybody else on Thursday morning like it normally does. But just mm -hmm. wanted to give you guys a heads up, um, specifically Scott, because he'll be like, where's the show? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was like that. <laughs> uh, we've heard the joke before. <laughs> rule of three, and then the rule of 12. He still also sent me a text message making sure that we were recording on Wednesday. <laughs> what? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. With Reverend Scott. A little Aaron Palmer right there. That's good <laughs> stuff.
This is Reverend Scott. Hey there, Bill and Chris. That's that's hilarious. It's the, it's he said the exact same thing he always said, <laughs> but different. And I'm gonna give you that fresh holy shit as only I can give it to you. You can if that's the only option you have, but <sighs> you shouldn't. <laughs> if only you had other options, but all you have is me, and I watch something some are calling terrible or at least controversial. But is it really? And was it any good? Well, hold your breath until you get to find out. But let's first review your reviews of Apartment 143 and The Batwoman. Uh, I, I guess. All right, that's fine. So what are we starting with, Bill? Apartment 143. Okay. And continuing with my laziness, Chris, tell us the plot of Apartment 143. It was just boring, 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 boring. Oh, a picture's different. Boring. Something moved. Boring, boring. Daughter's yelling. Oh, gives a shit. <laughs> Which makes it sound like Chris didn't like this movie. And that's because Chris didn't like this movie. But to be fair, Bill only liked it in comparison to recent trash. It was fine. It was fine. And I'm probably only saying that because the last couple we've done have been a real bad. Chris especially hated the quality of the picture, which reminded him of a royal family tree that only has one branch. That's like making a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, and then you make me review it for the show. Hmm. One of Chris's <laughs> biggest gripes was that the writers of this movie didn't seem to know how to bullshit technical jargon, or that a poltergeist is really a ghost. Dan Aykroyd can write sci-fi fantasy techno jumbo like nobody's fucking business and that's what they tried to do here but what they didn't have is apparently the basic knowledge of the fundamentals of you know the mythologies of ghosts or google i guess <laughs> so i give apartment 143 a d plus and i give the review a b minus but what about the other film you reviewed what was it bill We'll move on to 1968's The Batwoman, or Ma La Muerje, Muerje Mursalago. <laughs> that was real bad. That was real bad. Uh, Yikes. Anyway, I've <laughs> never heard of this movie before. Yeah, there's a good reason for that. Okay, okay. But a female luchador made to look like Batwoman? I'm on board for that already. Add in the fact that... He's had all of his penile juices removed. Yes. Wait. No, that sounds awful, which is good. Yep, I get it. But there's not much more to say about this one that you haven't already said. So I give it an A, and I give the review an A. But does what I watched get an A? They does it a happen? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. Well, I watched a new stand-up comedy special called Super Nature by Ricky Gervais on your boy Netflix. And I'll start by saying... Yes, I realize that Ricky says things on purpose to provoke people. His attitude towards negative comments is generally, Fuck you. Come here and say that to my face. I will. Oh. He makes it a point to get into jokes about the transgender community within five minutes of his set. That part of the show has been called transphobic, while others say it's making fun of those that are transphobic. And while my gut feeling is that Ricky is not actually transphobic, I think he knows exactly what the reaction to those jokes will be and goes out of his way to include them to get it. He mentions several times in his act that he's a rich multimillionaire and very much is not bothered by the opinion of strangers, or AKA us poor people. I'm guessing after the show he walked off the stage thinking, I didn't give a shit about any of these people. And that's mm. fine for him, but did I give a shit about his act? I don't... <laughs> I don't know. I'll first say that his TV shows like Afterlife, Derek, and The Office, they're great. His combination of dark comedy with emotional real-life situations is incredibly effective. Rarely does a show impact me like Derek and Afterlife did. But when it comes to his stand-up, there was no emotional impact. There was basically only jokes. Jokes that oftentimes were very similar to ones that I'd heard before, or just typical low-hanging fruit. Basically, any comedian can do offensive content or controversial topics and jokes. It's not hard to push buttons on purpose. How exactly. fucking tough is that? <laughs> not tough. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just, not tough at all. But you really have to be good to be funny while doing it. 
The special called Thoughts and Prayers by Anthony Jeselnik is a good example of one of those mm. that works for me. Supernature by Ricky Gervais, on the other hand, is an example of one that does not. I'm not a category of person that should be judging if he's transphobic, homophobic, or any other type of phobic or degenerate. But one thing I do know is what makes me laugh. And his jokes were not one of those things. I give his special a C minus, and I recommend you watch one of his shows on Netflix <laughs> instead of this. I also recommend you tune in to Outside the Cinema next week when Bill and Chris review a David Lynch movie. It's better than nothing, but it doesn't make a lick of sense. <laughs> After that, Chris delicately explains why he doesn't like my offensive comedy. Well, it's because you were a fucking dick your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> And now, when you're alone, no one wants to talk to you because you're a miserable puss. <laughs> and finally, Bill gives some constructive criticism of Chris's own offensive stand-up comedy. Once you use that yeah. word, you can't take it back. Right. All that and so many other words we used and we can't take it back. But until then, peace and love, guys. Holy shit with Reverend Scott. Jesus fucking Christ, what a waste of time. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> that's good stuff. <laughs> All right, well. That's it for us this week. Yeah. Um, I now have to dig through all the text messages and calls that I just had come through, so that's cool. Uh, <laughs> join the Facebook group. Or don't. Yeah. Follow us on social media, at OTC Bill and at Cthulhu, Or don't. Yep. And enjoy your week. Or don't. Or don't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week. Or, no. <laughs> or we won't. I probably won't. <laughs> Goodbye. Right, bye. I'm going to go die. <coughs> <coughs> oh, shit. <laughs>